Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We have a few announcements this morning. Session meets after church today. Your session packets are in your mailboxes as usual. Um, next week, we will not be here. We will be out at the Greg Farm for our annual outdoor worship service. And we will have special guests set apart there to sing and play music for us and witness. And uh, I think we have some other fun things planned this time. Uh, so plan to stay around for a little while. Um, breakfast is 9 or 9.30, which is it, Susan? 9.30. And there is a sign-up sheet out on the parlor table if you want to bring casserole, fruit, uh, donuts, anything like that. Just sign up and plan to come and have a great time. Also, we are gearing up for the tomato show. I'm sure Susan has been knocking on your door to get you to come take your time in the booth out there or to do anything else that we can do to help out. And then there's also a sign-up sheet for food and supplies. Do we have any other announcements before we go to announcing our birthdays? Bean sorting is on the 28th, so if you have signed up for beans, yeah, if you signed up for beans, make sure you have them here by the 28th. And yes, anybody can sort beans. <laughs> is that during the day or 9 o'clock? 9.30 is good, 10 is good, 11 is good. <laughs> They'll save you some beans. <laughs> Uh, anything else? We have some birthdays this week. Happy birthday to Jim Barber, Dave Thompson, and Kate Welch. So if you see any of them, wish them happy birthday. Let us stand now for our call to worship. The God of wisdom sent Jesus Christ, the bread of life, to teach us his ways, to feed us with his flesh and blood, and to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. All blessing, glory, and honor be unto you, O God, for your way guides our behavior and your saving power redeems us when we stray. You are beneath us as a sure foundation. You are above us as a canopy of light. You are the living bread that gives us life. You stand behind us as the source of all righteousness and peace. God of all that was, is, and shall be, we praise and adore you. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 634, To God Be the Glory.
Good morning. Welcome to the prayer of confession and the call to confession. We'll do the prayer in unison, as always. Seeking the wisdom of the Lord, let us consider how we have lived, confessing our sins and trusting in the mercy of God. Merciful God, we have not been faithful children. We have not lived by your law. We have remained silent in the face of evil. We have not refrained from deceit, and we have not followed in the way of peace. We have not honored all that is true and good. We have been foolish and immature people who resist the holy wisdom you graciously offer. Forgive us our sin, O God, and lead us to sincere repentance through Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ offers himself as bread of life to all who would receive him. This proves his love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, through this reading of the Holy Scripture, feed us with your living word and reveal to us the way of everlasting life. Amen. First reading is from 1 Kings chapter 2. Then David slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The time that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his kingdom was firmly established. Solomon loved the Lord. Walking in the statutes of his father David only, he sacrificed and offered incense in the high places. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for it was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burned offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you, and you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and you have given him a place for his son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself a long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall rise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. Second scripture reason, reason, uh, reading is from Ephesians chapter 5. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Do not be foolish, but understand that the will of the Lord is, do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Now greet your neighbor with the peace of Christ.
easier. How was your week? Good. Good? Yeah? You went back to school, right? Everything went okay there? Yeah? Anything kind of not fun happen this week, or was it mostly just good? Mostly pretty good. Mine was too. But I kind of had sort of a mixed week. I had some really fun things happen. I took my mom and we went down to Kosai and we saw the Titanic exhibit and a whole bunch of other fun things. That was really cool. But you know what else I did? I went to a different church last week and I did one of my little chime solo thingies and the first service was perfect. And you know what happened on the second service? <laughs> I had a false start. You know what a false start is? It's when you start out doing something and you, it, you just know it's going to crash and burn. And so I looked at that whole room full of people and I said, I can do better. And I started the tape over and then I did just fine. But, you know, that's kind of embarrassing and not really fun, right? Because you want so badly to do everything just right. And then the other thing is, when I got here this morning, do you know we, had way, we were going to have a way more fun experiment to do? than the one that's set up here. And I had kind of gotten it ready a couple weeks ago. The thing I didn't know about it was that the stuff I was using for the experiment, if you leave it for several days, it ferments. <laughs> it smells so bad. <laughs> so I wrapped it up in a whole bunch of plastic bags and threw it away, and we started over. So I've had lots of do-overs this week. And do you know, I could either let those things get on the inside of me and make me all upset, or I cannot. And just to kind of teach us that lesson, do you know we're going to put this little boat, if you will, in the water? And if we think about this water, let's say it was stormy and it's all choppy and it's all rough, we're still okay, right? Because you know why? We didn't let that rough, rough water get on the inside. But if we let it get on the inside, we sink. Yeah. The same thing's kind of with our feelings. You know, we can either let all that bad stuff get on the inside and make us all sad, and we can concentrate on that all the time, or we can trust God to make everything okay, even if we need to do a do-over, and we can float. That's pretty cool, huh? Why don't we say a prayer to God, and part of that will be our thanks for all the great things he does when he gets in on the inside for us, okay? Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be my name. Thy kingdom come, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Mine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Prepare our hearts for prayer. Let us turn to our prayer hymn number 501, Feed Us, Lord.
As we prepare our hearts for the Lord, let us share our joys and concerns. We have an unspoken prayer request for the Blanchard family. Please keep that family in your prayers. Um, BJ, how's your husband doing? Day by day a little better. He broke a rib a little while back. Uh, of course, we pray for Donnie and Sue, and Judy continues to heal from her break. Um, my mom's friend Eva is back home and making progress, so we're very happy about that. And Carl is continuing to heal from his fall. Of course, we pray for Annalise and Bob and Barbara and Ruth as she continues to mend from surgery. Do we have any other joys or concerns? Rosemary. So a good friend and your brother-in-law with health issues and sister-in-law's husband passed away? Yes. Yes. Let's pray for Kathy as she's experiencing pain. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. As Christ offered himself for the life of the world, let us pray now for the needs of the world and for our friends and family and for this congregation. We pray for our planet. We ask you, Lord, that you calm the storms and quiet the rumbling volcanoes. Give us seasonable weather and tranquil seas. Let the earth yield an abundance of fruit for the flourishing of every creature and give humankind the will to use its resources wisely. We pray for those who govern the nations and exercise authority in civic life. Give our governing officials wisdom in the ways of peace and justice and courage to pursue the common good. Loving God, we pray for the church in every land. Make us shining examples of your love. We pray for those who lead your church. Guide the pastors, elders, deacons, teachers, and administrators who order the life of the Christian community and strengthen them to be faithful in their calling and humble in their service. We pray for this church and its future. We ask that you continue to guide us as we seek to serve you. We trust that you will show us the way forward. You have honored us with ideas and visions for the future. We thank you for your faithfulness. Guide us as we make decisions for the future and show us clearly the way we should go. Bless this church so that we may bless others. Sustain us and bring to us new life, new energy, and new workers for your kingdom purpose. We pray for the sick, the poor, the grieving, and the oppressed. Help those who are in need and stir us to be your instruments in the relief of human misery. Many have shared with us their need for your care, for the cares that we have named and for those we carry in our hearts. We turn to you, Lord, for provision and comfort. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people and grant that what we ask in faith that we may receive according to your gracious love. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our gospel text for this morning comes from John chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. 
Let us hear the word of the Lord. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. This week, as we wrap up our study on the Bread of Life discourse, we will focus on our daily need for Jesus. John's gospel passage for this section began with Jesus feeding the multitudes. Jesus took five small loaves of bread and two small fish, and he fed 5,000 men plus women and children. And when they had had their fill, the disciples collected the leftovers, and there was more left over than what they had to begin with. But this was only supposed to be a starting place. Astonishing as the miracle was, it was only an object lesson meant to teach a greater principle. It was not about the meal. Wikipedia lists 222 varieties of sandwich, sandwiches on their website. You can purchase a sandwich in nearly every restaurant, fast food chain, gas station, or food truck across the country. And for many, a sandwich will suffice. Who needs a balanced meal anyway? This was the attitude of those in the crowd that day with Jesus. They were content to fill their bellies. But Jesus was not willing to leave the people half fed any more than he was willing to leave himself half fed when he was hungry in the desert. And he ate nothing during those 40 days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. If only the crowd had understood this. Jesus tried to teach them, but his message was so radical and so outside of the box that they became dissatisfied and disgusted and they walked away, choosing to live by bread alone. They were starving to death spiritually, and they did not recognize the feast that stood before them. Jesus offered them the food they truly needed, yet so many of them refused. As we prayed the Lord's Prayer this morning, we asked God to give us this day our daily bread. In doing so, we acknowledged our dependence upon God's provision not only to meet our physical needs, but also our spiritual needs. Praying this prayer is an act of worship. It is our way of admitting to God that we need him, and we cannot make it even one day without him. It is a demonstration of faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. 
when we pray sincerely and not just by rote, asking God for daily bread is an admission. It's an admission to God that we believe in God's promises and we believe in God's power to fulfill those promises. Dallas Willard wrote, Today I have God and he has the provisions. Tomorrow will be the same. I will have God, and he will have the provisions. So I simply ask God for what I need today. So what is our daily bread? It is the communion, communion bread that we partake that represents Christ's body broken for us. It is God's word that nourishes our souls. It is Jesus who knocks at the door of our hearts, longing to eat with us if we will just invite him in. And yes, it is the bread that we use on our sandwiches that fills our belly. It takes all of this to balance our lives and to make us whole. So the question remains then, what is the bread that you seek? Are you content with just a sandwich, or do you also seek Jesus? Thinking back to yesterday, or last week, or to, I don't know, maybe always? What bread do you seek most often? Do you merely grab a sandwich and go, or do you take time for a balanced meal? If you don't like your answer, that's okay. Today is a new day with new opportunities to make new decisions. And God's mercies are new every morning. Going forward, will you spend each day in the word? Because no matter how much we know God's word, we still need to feed daily upon that word. Will you spend every day with Jesus? No matter how much of the Lord is in your heart, you still need a daily portion of living bread. Consider the imagery of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Jesus, who is the bread of life, began life on earth literally lying in a food trough. Jesus came to meet our spiritual and physical needs. He came so that we can have a restored relationship and everlasting life with God in heaven. But we need our daily Jesus to get there. Dallas Holm wrote a song called, Jesus Got a Hold of My Life, and it goes like this. Sometimes I remember how I used to be living in sin. I tried to act happy and free, but I wasn't within. I fooled a lot of friends of mine. They thought I had some peace of mind, but I never had a thing until I opened up and let Jesus in. Aren't you getting just a little bit tired of fooling around? You try to laugh your way through life, but you're not gaining any ground. Why not try the Lord today? Just ask him into your heart to stay, and you'll find Jesus' love to be the greatest thing you've ever found. The chorus says, Jesus got a hold of my life and he won't let me go. Jesus got into my heart. He got into my soul. Oh, I used to be so sad, but now I'm just free and glad because Jesus got a hold of my life and he won't let me go. The thing is, we have a say in this matter. We can fool around and gorge ourselves on things that don't last, like manna that spoils overnight. Or we can ask Jesus to come into our hearts to stay, day 
after day after day, never letting go. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. We know that to be on the cross. We also know that isn't the end of the story. For our resurrected Jesus is living bread. And oh, how we need him every day. Therefore, we pray, give us this day our daily Jesus. Let us pray. God of bounty and provision, we come to you today asking for daily bread. Not only for the bread that fills our bellies, but for the bread of life that fills our hearts, sustains our hopes, and gives us life everlasting. With this daily portion comes an abundance that overflows, and it is the overflow that allows us to love others as we are loved. It allows us to forgive others if we, as we have been forgiven, and it allows us to serve others sacrificially as Jesus gave of himself for us. Thank you, Lord, for daily bread. Amen. God has given to us the bread of life. With joyful hearts, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Receive, O God, the fruits of our labor, and with these gifts accept the offering of our lives. Unite us with Christ that we may share in his ministry to glorify you. Amen. Our closing hymn, singing twice through, is number 626, As the Deer. May the blessing of God, the grace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you as you go forth to love and serve the Lord.